Well, 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 returning listeners and new listeners, how you doing, how you living, how you feeling? Now, if you consider yourself an anxious person, this episode is for you. Okay, if you deal with anxiety, if you know someone who deals with anxiety, if you have that nervous tension within the body, these intrusive thoughts, excessive worry, scenario building, thinking about the future, avoiding social situations for fear of embarrassment, that might that you might fail, that you might do something wrong, this episode is for you. Now, I would never label any person with an emotion. So I just said that for simplicity's sake, you know, an anxious person, a happy person, a sad person, a depressed person. Emotion, the word motion is in the word emotion, all right? Our feelings are in constant flow. Even if you consider yourself an anxious person, I'm sure there's times where you do get relief, if not only when you're sleeping. So how can you be an anxious person when you're not anxious exactly 100% of the time? See, you know what I'm saying? So you're not an anxious person. You're a person that might experience anxiety. And first of all, I just want to start with saying that's okay. Let's start with where people are when speaking about mental health rather than where we think they should be. See, that's why I cringe sometimes when I see other coaches and other people in the mental health space, and I don't want to name specific names. That's not what this is about. I have my own little process. I I like to give you the power and you the tools. What good is it if I just tell you what to do and then you do it? First of all, that's not very empowering, but it's not really fun. I can't go into someone's mind and turn the gears. At some point, an individual needs to make the choice, needs to make the decision to turn those gears themselves. Now, I can give you a little screwdriver. I can give you a bit of grease to make those gears turn a little better, okay? But the person needs to do it. And you know what? That's the fun part. That's the part where people see growth and they get excited. They say, oh my gosh, I did that on my own, right? I I, I was given a little nudge. I did it on my own. I'm feeling relief. My gosh, I'm capable of so much. I have more control than I thought, right? The wind doesn't break me every storm, okay? I don't get burnt by the sun every time the clouds move. I have strength within me. And that's the fun part about conversing and and being a coach for these people who deal with anxiety. We're on the same level, everyone, okay? There is no hierarchy in this. And that's where I think through maybe through Hollywood and what we watch on TV, it's like therapist is here and then patient is is lying on the leather couch. You know, pharmacist is a few levels up like the Seinfeld and the, the patient who's getting the pills is down there and the pharmacist is like, okay, I'm giving you the pills, but you'll wait down there. Only people who are like me can be up here. Right, the classic, the classic Seinfeld bit. It's amazing. We're on the same level here when it comes to anxiety. So I want to speak to you as a human being, as someone just like me with those same psychological needs. And I've been there. I know what it's like. And I still get there. A person who doesn't experience some anxiety is flatlined. We need anxiety. It helps us stay alive. But of course, like any emotion, it doesn't help if I was happy all the time. That's not a life. That's not a life. If you're depressed all the time, that's not a life. If you're anxious all the time, that's not a life. The point is, if you're stuck in that state of anxiety, that's you're not getting the most out of what life has to offer and what you can offer to life and what you can offer to others. All right, It's about getting unstuck in that anxious state and being in that nice flow and being content with those emotions that come and they go, oh cry just talking about it so first of all i just want to say it's okay if you feel anxious that's all i want to say to you right now it's okay if you feel jittery it's okay if you're worried right now because you know what by all by all statistics the majority of statistics we live in in an amazing time sanitation less people are starving right food availability Okay, we have cars, we have computers, we can talk to people across the world, we're going to go to Mars, we went to the moon. This is amazing stuff. But sometimes that logic doesn't help because it's too far gone. It's too out of our reach. 
We're like, yeah, I know we're going to Mars, but I've never met Elon Musk and I've never been in the shuttle. That doesn't help me with this grand perspective. Anxiety starts within us. We need to feel content. We need to love ourselves first. We need to get excited for life first. We need to love ourselves and know that we have something to offer. We have meaning in our lives that can be shared if we decide to share it. So as you know, my friends, I'm going to continue with that tangent because I feel for people who are dealing with anxiety. And I'm going to come out with a video on YouTube that goes through my story. I've never gone like, you know, from A to Z with my story of anxiety and depression. So stay tuned for that. Um, But again, there's no ads or sponsors on this channel. I just want to make a quick little plug in this episode. Um, 12 years in the making, 12 years, ever since that anxiety diagnosis and depression diagnosis and me being the human guinea pig for all things imaginable to understand these mental illnesses, these emotions, how to mitigate these feelings, to understand them, to go deeper into them, what works, what doesn't work. Well, after 12 years, I've put together an online course called Conquer Anxiety, the Mind, Body, Method. That's right. I'm so excited. Should we just, should we announce that with like some, some cool music? Let's, let's use Beethoven in this. Um, how about the Sixth Symphony? How about that? How about, okay, let's try that again. And my friends, actually, let's do a calm, calm announcement, okay? This course is going to blow your mind, but let's just have fun with it. Okay, let's try this again. Ready? Okay, get back, relax. Here we go. My friends, I'd like to announce something to you today. Coming out with an anxiety course. It's called Conquer Anxiety, The Mind-Body Method. And you're listening to this on 96.3, The Classical Wave of Brilliance. Maybe that even made you calm. I think you'd be great in the course if that if that made you feel soothed. No, but seriously, 12 years in the making. I wanted to come out with something that wasn't rushed. Obviously, after 12 years, this wasn't rushed. I want to be proud of something. I stand by this course 100%. To deal with anxiety, to overcome anxiety, to conquer anxiety, you can't just come out with this stuff in a week. You can't just read a book and then decide to come out with a course. This took a long time. This is well thought out. This is going to resonate and help so many people. There's already hundreds on the wait list. So Conquer Anxiety, the mind-body method. If you're interested in this course, that's unlike anything that's out there. I wouldn't have come out with a course if I knew there was something better because then I just honestly tell you all, hey, look, if you're dealing with anxiety, go do this course. It's going to help so much because I've done that too and no course helped me. Therapy wasn't even as helpful as I thought it could have been and maybe even should have been. It didn't help. Everything that I've learned over the past 12 years is in this course. Step by step, how to overcome anxiety. It is so badass. So if you want to join that wait list, and I hope you get in because I'm only taking a a handful of students because I want an intimate environment. We're going to have people from all over the world who come in, who are going to be on that same mission, that same pilgrimage, understand what what anxiety feels like, track each other's progress, see how we're doing, live streams with me. This is going to be so much fun. Video modules, like, oh my gosh. I've never been so proud of something. Honestly. And I wouldn't have come out with this if I wasn't ready and I didn't think it would be helpful. So if you want to join that wait list, it's conqueranxietycourse.com. Conquer, C-O-N-Q-U-E-R, course. Nope, I messed that up. Conquer anxiety. Let's just leave that blooper in. I don't like editing. Conqueranxietycourse.com. So conquer, C-O-N-Q-U-E-R, and then anxiety. Even just the word anxiety makes us anxious. You know what I mean? A-N-X-I-E-T-Y and then course. C-O-U-R-S-E. It's like we're in a spelling bee. We never had those in school. Maybe I went to the wrong school. We never had those. Did you have spelling bees? Is it more of an American thing? I'm not sure. In Canada, we're a little weird up here. 
We, we just we just were taught to hunt beavers and, and live in the woods. So if that if, if, if you want to join the wait list, please go to that URL, conqueranxietycourse.com. And all you do is put your name or sorry, just your, just your email into the wait list. And then you're going to get all the email updates. I'm coming with a six part video series just for you. Six part video series that actually gets you started on your own journey through the mind body method, like step by step. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited to hear your feedback and to meet people and to work with you and to watch your progress. My gosh, because I did a video a few days ago and it makes me emotional and it also, you know, brings up a little bit of anger that people who deal with anxiety or any any kind of mental issue, they have you have so much to offer to the world. Like you have so much. Your ideas are original. I want to hear your ideas. I want to hear your perspectives. I want to meet you at a party or a social gathering and just chat and shoot the shit. Like we need you out there. The world wants you out there. And it's weird because the people, ugh, I, I don't want to talk bad about anyone, okay? But when I go to like social gatherings or events, networking events, parties, I'm like the people that I want to hang out with right now are probably at home and too anxious to come out. But those are the people with the cool ideas, right? The, the anxious people, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, our sympathetic nervous systems when people are anxious are, are through the roofs. They're very active, but we're perfectionists. We want everything to be just like so. We need to line up the world like so. You have cool ideas of how to organize the world. You have creative ideas. I know that. There's talents within you that maybe aren't being expressed because of anxiety. And that's what makes me emotional. That's um, Kelly Brogan and I were talking about that uh, video um, and, and podcast episode to be released soon. We were talking about that. It's like people bogged down by anxiety and depression have so much to offer. And I feel like it's my passion to, to help get your talents and your personality and your ideas out into the world. For not Not for the world, screw the world, for you for you to express yourself fully. So listen, the course is unlike anything else out there. Again, I wouldn't have created it if I knew there was something better. And here's the big deal with it. It's fun. I know it sounds weird, but I'm a weird guy. The course is fun. If it was a serious course, like the tools you're going to learn and the exercises you're going to learn and the the regimes, the morning regime before bed to get better night's sleeps, how to start your morning to, to embrace a sense of calm that lasts throughout the day. These are things that are fun to learn. If it was just me doing a screen recording and speaking monotone, you're not going to get a lot out of it, but it's fun. We do fun exercises. We don't take ourselves too seriously, which actually reduces anxiety. Because people who are anxious think that the world revolves around them, not out of narcissism, but you put the pressure of the world on you because one failure, one mistake, one wrong note, and my gosh, the world will crumble. So my friends, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. We need to shake that off a little bit and have some fun. So the course is fun and that's why people complete it because it's fun and you get results along the way and you have a community of support and understanding it has to be fun it needs to be exciting or else people won't do it it's just like when you were forced to listen to shakespeare did you do that at school did you have to learn shakespeare i did and the teacher was terrible and we just read shakespeare at our desks you can't understand shakespeare by reading it and with a bunch of high school students, it wasn't fun. Therefore, studying for a subject that isn't taught well, that isn't fun and exciting, you don't put work into it. You don't put time into it. When something is fun, you're going to want to study. You're going to want to do more. Therefore, the more you do in the right way, the better results. So that's enough of that. I really hope to see you on the wait list and I hope you get into the course. It's conqueranxietycourse.com. It's going to be all over my social media within the next few weeks as I talk about it a little more because I'm so dang excited. So thanks a lot for going to that website. If you paused and you're back, you put your email in. That's amazing. Now let's talk more about anxiety. So I told you guys 
I'm sorry if I say you guys all the time. I told you all that that anxiety can make us feel like we aren't worthy of our talents, like the world doesn't care about what we're doing, but the world is too anxious for us to take part in. And that's living in the world of anxiety. Like, have you ever watched the news? Have you seen what's going on in the world? It, the world is in an anxious state. I feel like if we zoomed out that pale blue dot, that Carl Sagan, pale blue dot, right? If we zoomed out on the world, I swear it would be shaking right now. And the atmosphere would be crumbling. It feels like an anxious time. And, and again, I want to say, first of all, that's okay. Start in a place of compassion. That's okay that you feel anxious. But why? I know, don't get mad at me. But really, why are you anxious? Have you asked yourself that? Because a lot of the time, our answer is, I don't know why I'm anxious, I'm just anxious. And then, yo, fair enough, fair enough. Because what happens is, okay, here's an example. There's like two different ways memories work. Memories can actually be stored in the amygdala, those almond-shaped things in our brains. And then memories can be stored in the frontal cortex, okay? Now, memories in the cortex are emotional memories, okay, but that we actually have the memory of. Okay, so if you were in the sandbox, I'm going to use an example. The last time I got stung by a bee, I was in a sandbox in my hometown, and I tried to hit it with, the, I remember, it was a yellow plastic shovel. But if memory serves me right, it probably wasn't a yellow shovel. It probably wasn't even a shovel at all. If we look back, about we, we get about 50% of our memories are incorrect when we, when we look back in time, uh, which is why eyewitness testimony is so bad. It's like, it was a blue car that hit me. Actually, sir, it was a green car, and it wasn't even a car. It was a, it was a Ford pickup. So anyways, I was in the sandbox. Let's just pretend my memory's right. Swung for the bee, hit me right on the cheek. I remember going inside. My mom put cream on me. I'm crying. Now, if I think about that, maybe today I'm anxious when I see a bee. But I can know that, okay, that's because of that memory. Yeah, I had a bad experience with that bee and I'm afraid it'll happen again. Okay, that's our cortex memory. The amygdala, we get anxious sometimes out of nowhere but we don't know the memory that's attached to that. The amygdala, amygdala doesn't store that for us. So if we go to a party and we get anxious and we're just like, why? I, I, anxiety came out of nowhere. At times, this might be, yeah, we did have a bad experience at a party years ago. We can't attach a memory to it. So we automatically think, I don't know why I'm anxious. So my friends, that again just having that knowledge now for you, that might help you say, okay, if I'm anxious and I don't know why, maybe there is some type of past experience that's making me say, hey, Scott, maybe there's a threat here just to let you know. I'm going to increase your heart rate a little bit. I'm going to tighten up that stomach. Okay, now scan the area. Okay, it's okay that you're anxious. Look for the threat. Okay, I just wanted to warn you a little bit. Okay, no threat. Okay, now let's do an exercise to calm us down, to increase that capacity to, to lower our heart rates, to activate our parasympathetic nervous systems, to get back into the moment through the breath, right? And that's how that works. So knowledge, my friends, understanding anxiety and asking yourself why is a very powerful tool. But even the I don't know, but then taking the next step and knowing this amygdala and cortex memory, that brings, it makes sense now that you don't know. So we have to, we have, we have different steps of understanding anxiety. And we go through all of this in a course, in the course. That's just one thing. And it reassures you. Everyone wants reassurance today. That's about living in the anxious world today, too. And oh my gosh, can I just stretch my shoulders real quick? Hold on. I don't want to edit this. So I'm just going to do this exercise right now. I did some heavy, heavy bands yesterday for a workout and my traps are just, just so tight. I'm going to get the heating pad on there and do some stretches. Uh, okay. Thanks for letting me stretch. So in, it, we're, we're living in an anxious world, meaning 
that, okay, we ask ourselves, why are we anxious? We have this step one, step two process of actually knowing, knowing anxiety and what that feels like. And we want that reassurance. That's okay. But think about the world we live in now with COVID, with everything that's going on in politics, with elections, with the environment, with our safety. We want reassurance, but we can't get it. We can't get it from the news. The news never gives you reassurance. Actually, it's the news job to not reassure you, to keep you in a state of fear. So we need to do the work, my friends. And it's amazing because it's so probable, not even possible. It's probable. You can do the work of reassurance. Okay, that's where this... Okay, let me give you another quick cognitive shortcut. And this was... I, I spoke about this... Uh, years ago in a YouTube video, I, I share this shortcut with every every talk I give, even to kids. It's great for kids, but it works for adults too. It's with these negative thoughts that we experience and these things that, let's just say, psych us out of the moment. Okay, one thought can trigger another. We follow this chain and we just get into a place that we don't want to be. We're completely removed from the moment. We need to ask ourselves the three words, is this useful? Okay, remember those three words. It's a quick cognitive shortcut. Okay, when we have a negative thought, an intrusive thought, or any thought for that matter, if we ask ourselves when the thought comes in, is this useful? Well, 9.9 times out of 10, my friends, the answer is going to be no. No, the thought isn't useful. The thought was, Scott, you're an idiot. I ask myself, is this useful? I say, no, that's not a useful thought. That's not helping me achieve my goals. That's not, that's not helping me calm down. That's not helping me connect with this person I'm speaking to. That's not going to help me get a raise at work, whatever your values are. That's not aligning with my values. And what happens is you ask yourself, is this useful? Your brain says no. You say no. And you move on. And what happens is, oh my gosh, we rewire our brains this way, my friends, because every time a thought comes in, right, you ask yourself, is this useful? Now, not every thought. Okay, but we develop a, a, a practice with this. Is this useful? And then you say, yeah, that's a useful thought. That was a good thought. That thought made me think about something else. That thought actually made me work a little harder, work smarter. That thought actually pushed me to do this. That thought made me feel good. That thought reassured me. We say, yes, that's a good thought. And as we continue to do this and practice, yes or no, is this useful? The good thoughts stick. Not the bad ones anymore. Not the ones we follow down the chain. The good thoughts stick in our mind. We rewire our brains that way. It starts with us asking those questions. Okay? So that's one. I want you to remember that trick. Is this useful? When you have those intrusive thoughts... When you have those negative thoughts, thoughts of self-doubt, self-doubt takes form in the mind, in cognition. It takes control of us thinking, why, why do you think you'd be able to do that? How dare you think you could do that? You're not good enough to accomplish this. What, who gives you the right to do that? Why should you get that job, right? Why would you be the life of the party? Why would you be the funny guy? Why do you think you can be funny? Why do you think you're the best? Why do you think you're cool? Why? Like we bring ourselves down and then we answer the thought like, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. I, why do, why did I even think I could do that? Now that I think about it more, right? I can't do that. We psych ourselves out. So the, is this useful trick brings you into state of curiosity. You challenge those thoughts and then the good ones stick. So I hope you think that's, that's helpful too. And that brings that reassurance. We're living in a world of anxiety. People are anxious. We're not alone in that emotion. But we can't look to the world for the solution. We need to take responsibility ourselves. And we've been told this, told and sold this narrative that anxiety is something that you have to live with forever. That's it. Anxiety is something, it's a mental illness. You have to live with it forever. There's nothing you can do with it other than take a pharmaceutical. You know my position on pharmaceuticals. Sometimes they work wonders for people. That's fine. That's fine. But it's not the only option. See, in Canada, we don't have 
pharmaceutical commercials. I remember multiple times traveling to the U.S. I'll be in hotels or I'll be at a person's place and you turn on the TV. And actually in my condo, actually, yeah, of course, recently, uh, we have an antenna and we actually get stations in New York and Buffalo because it's right across the right across the lake. And it's pharmaceutical commercials all the time. We're, and we're not allowed to have that in Canada. So when I see these U.S. channels and it's pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical commercials, if you deal with depression, here's a pill. If you deal with anxiety, here's a pill. We always look for the magic pill. We always look for the quick fix. The truth is, anxiety takes work. Well-being is a skill. Well-being is a skill. It's a habit. We need to put in the effort. We need to put in the work. Now, what people don't tell you and why people get psyched out and they're like, oh, I don't want to do the work though. I just, I'd rather take the pill. Well, of course, because when we use the word work, we think of work. Hope that wasn't too loud. We think of work. And so many people hate their jobs and they don't like work. Work means sweat. Work means stress. Work means having your boss come at you and call you a prick and to get more work done. Work is negative in our culture. Work is not negative when it comes to healing from anxiety. At least not in my experience. That's why in my course, just to plug it one more time because I freaking love it. Like I absolutely love it. It's supposed to be fun. The work has to be fun for people to do it. So of course, a pill is easier and may not be as effective, but it's easy and people can continue going on with their lives. What if the work to deal with anxiety was fun? People looked forward to it. Oh my goodness. If people look forward to it, then you make time for it. It's not like, oh, I better go do this exercise because it's going to help me rather than, oh, I just had to pop a pill, take the water, go back to work. No, we need to make these things fun for people so it's long lasting, so it's sustainable. We're so backwards today, aren't we? Like it's, it's no wonder. And this isn't pointing fingers at you. And remember, it's okay if you feel anxious right now, but it's no wonder the world is anxious. It's not surprising to me why people are depressed and anxious. It's, it's, it makes so much sense why people are anxious and depressed. Doesn't it make sense to you? Let's ask why. Let's ask, ask why again. Why are people generally more anxious and depressed than ever before? Look at the state of our world and how people are living their lives. Our values are way out of whack. We prioritize stupid stuff. We save our money to get the latest iPhone rather than buying healthier food, rather than saving up to go to therapy. We'd rather the latest phone. We'd rather different clothes. We'd rather get a boob job. Unbelievable. Our priorities are way out of whack. I see people, just the cars they drive in the city. And I'm like, I would even if I was a billionaire, and mark my words, if I ever become a billionaire, I don't really want to, but let's say it happens. I will drive a Honda Civic. Mark my words, my friends. I'm Actually, you know what? I'll probably drive a Prius. Amazing fuel economy. Why are our priorities the way that they are? We don't value human connection. We value video games. And don't get me wrong. I love video games. Okay. All right. Any, any uh, Call of Duty Warzone players out there? Okay. Hit me up. I love them. But it shouldn't take place of human connection. See, so we're prioritizing the wrong stuff. We're prioritizing like technology over human connection and fast food over healthy food and sitting down over exercise. So look at the state of the world right now. And then we'll ask why people are depressed. Okay, so the number one killer of, of human beings in the West, in the US, is sugar, okay? Heart disease, okay? And obesity, all right? That, that kills more people than, than gun violence. Uh, by a long shot, it's sugar, it's our diet, okay? We're sitting for way longer than we used to. We all have desk jobs, 
we're sitting indoors, okay? We're not exposed to sunlight. Every, si well, I'm not going to say every single Canadian, the majority of Canadians have low vitamin D levels. We're inside all the time. We're not getting enough sunlight. That's not even during the winter months. During the summer months, we're not getting outside enough and getting sunshine. Our vitamin D levels, then we don't even know what to eat. We're eating the wrong foods. We all have these very high carb diets, which spike our blood sugar, make us feel more anxious, and then we crash and we're eating more because we're not actually satiated from the carbohydrates. They give us the temporary energy we need, and then they go right through us. What we should be doing is having more healthy fats and proteins, whether it's animal protein or plant protein, that's okay. But we have refined sugars. We have so much dairy, right? We have all of these carbohydrates in our diet that don't actually do much for our bodies and brains. So all of that combined mixed with more people than ever living alone right now. Okay. So there's less actual friend groups and social connection. Okay. Mix that with the state of the world of this pandemic. Okay, we got another thing on top. Mix that with, I think, one of the biggest things. If we were going to stack this on top, I'd put this at like number one or two, social media use. Put that on top with social comparison. We're like feeling like we're not good enough. Like the, the data on social media and anxiety disorders and depression is in. It's terrible for us. It's absolutely terrible. It's, it's wiring our brains completely different. It's completely messing up our dopamine response. It's because every like you get a little shot of dopamine. And what happens is this is why these dopamine detoxes are so powerful now is you take a break off social media. You start to feel better immediately. You do. You become less anxious immediately. So let's combine all of these factors with lack of exercise, with lack of sunlight, with lack of proper food, and with social media use, and lack of good sleep because we're on our phones all day and then at night. Now let me ask you, does it make sense why people are depressed and anxious? Of course. Of course. Now who can we point a finger at? That's, a, that's the tough one. Now, we take as much responsibility as we can, but a lot of the time, the knowledge isn't out there. Like the, the food pyramid told us that we need to have dairy every single serving, that we should have a glass of milk with every meal, that we need to have whole grains. And we all know now that the food pyramid could actually be flipped and fats should be at the bottom and proteins. Dairy shouldn't even be on there unless you're breastfeeding. Children don't need milk. Adults don't need cow milk. And I wish I could interview Dr. Joanne Cacciatore again because she's a vegan and I'd love to, to hear. She's been a vegan since the 70s. So, I th oh, I don't want, ooh, was it the 70s? She still looks 30. Dr. Joanne, if you're, if you're listening, you look great. I don't know if you were, maybe she was born in the 70s. Yeah, she's not old at all. Okay, <laughs> let's let's move on from that. But you know what I mean? Like, Science changes. We need to learn these different things as we continue to live. So what's happening is people are still living this way with, with screens, with not enough exercise, with the same diet. We're not evolving as a species as we should. We're still monkeys. We have this reptilian brain. That's going to be in another episode. But we are still people with 200,000-year-old brains and now we have cars and cell phones. Can we, like, you want to sit and meditate on that for a little bit? Like, we have a 200,000-year-old brain, and the iPhone came out in 2007. Like, our brains don't know what to do with this stuff. It's no wonder we have trouble calming down. It's no wonder that we're an anxious species. So we need the tools, we need the exercises, we need the knowledge, we need to understand what anxiety means for us and how to mitigate and understand and overcome these feelings. So I'll plug it one more time. That's what the course goes through. There's going to be a lot more information as well as a six-part video series coming out. Make sure you're on that email wait list for the course. I can't wait to actually meet you face-to-face -face, or at least via, via Zoom when we do the live streams in the course. I can't wait to meet you. Um... I want to end on a softer note because I always get carried away with this stuff because it's a passion. And when you care about certain things, that's when arguments happen. 
right? No one argues with another individual. It usually happens when two are passionate about different things because you want to defend your position. You're so passionate about it, so you think you're right. And if the other person disagrees, well, you're of course, you're going to fight it. Arguments and disagreements come from passion. Energy comes from passion. And I'm passionate about this stuff, so thanks a lot for listening. It's, it's an anxious world. But the good news is you actually have the power. Sorry, I just swallow there. It's going to burp. You actually have the power. You have the intelligence. You have the capacity to overcome it. It's not a life sentence. Oh, and I, and I hate how in mental health awareness, which is why I usually don't collaborate with any mental health organization in Canada or the U.S., because I don't like the way mental health is talked about. It's about mental illness. It's about labels. It's about putting people into boxes. It's about saying anxiety is a mental illness that you live with and people telling their stories and not actually learning, not actually taking a step forward into a new direction, not the same path, forging a new path of understanding of growing spiritually, physically, emotionally, whatever it may be. We don't need to stay on the same path of disorders. That's why my conversation with Dr. Kelly Brogan was so awesome because she's anti-pharmaceutical. And it's cool to just get a new perspective. We have to be curious about these things. Open mind. We have to value our health more than anything. More than anything. It's only until people get unhealthy that they value their health more than anything. That's it. Once people get sick, money doesn't matter. Of course, money doesn't matter. You trade all the money in the world to just have one more healthy day. Ask someone who's terminally ill. Ask someone who's been diagnosed with cancer. What would you do? How much would you pay to not have cancer? They'd be like, take all my savings. Health is everything, my friends. Unfortunately, we realize that too late in our our lives. To just end off, I'd like to thank you all for for listening, for taking the time. That does mean a lot to me. It really does. I'd like to thank you for your emails, for your messages, and I'll see you all in the course. And again, I just want to let you know that if you feel anxious, that if you deal with these things, that's okay. Take the pressure off. Take the load off. It's okay where you are right now. You have to be somewhere first in order to get somewhere else. So it's all right. Stay strong. Keep being you. Don't forget to express yourself. This is Scott St. Marie signing off. Bye-bye.